I once had a student in the yeshiva many years ago who was very bothered. He had a good friend that was traveling around Israel who was a big skeptic. He was an atheist, didn't believe in anything, thought it was crazy that his friend would want to come to yeshiva. And he tried his darndest to get his friend to at least spend a couple days exploring his Judaism. His friend refused. One day I'm sitting and learning in the study hall of the yeshiva, and this kid comes over and taps me on the shoulder. He says, are you Rabbi Zeldman? I say, yeah. He says, my name is Brian. I'm a friend of so-and-so who is a student of yours in the yeshiva. I decided to actually spend some time learning here. I said, really? He said, yeah, my friend said I'm too chicken to come to yeshiva. So you know what he did? He gave me a $20 bet. I wouldn't be willing to spend one hour talking to you about Judaism. So here I am. I got an hour. Tell me about Judaism. I said, okay, let's make a time. We'll meet in the afternoon. We sit down in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. He says, so tell me, you believe in God? I say, yeah. As a matter of fact, I didn't always believe in God. It took me a while to get to that point. University, I studied it, I researched it. I'm pretty sure there's a God. He says, I think you're wasting your time. I say, why do you think so? He says, I'll tell you the truth. I spent four years doing my degree in philosophy at Cambridge University. My specialty was in theology. I've heard all the arguments on God's existence. I'm convinced there's no God. Let me hear what you have to say. I was a little scared. <laughs> what am I going to tell the guy who spent four years studying this subject? I'm sure he's heard it all before. So I told him, I said, Brian, let me ask you something. If we spent the next hour discussing God's existence, and at the end of the conversation, you're convinced that you beat me, you really show me that I'm wrong, how are you going to feel? He said, I feel great. I'd be very happy. What if it went the other way? We have a discussion for an hour. You give me your evidence. I give you my evidence. We discuss it. And by the end of the hour, you begin to realize I'm actually right and you're actually wrong. He says, Rabbi, if that happened, I'd be crushed. I said, Brian, there's no point in us having this conversation. You're telling me right now, you don't want to know the truth. You just want to win an argument. You'll be crushed if you discover that there's something that you didn't know. I can't have a discussion like that with somebody. You're too biased. You don't understand what I was talking What do you mean biased? Give me your evidence. Let's discuss it. I said, Brian, you don't understand. Let me give you an example. I said, I just happened to have finished reading a few months ago the biography of Albert Einstein. You want to hear something fascinating about Einstein? Einstein was living at a time in the early 1900s where there was a whole debate among scientists on what's going on in this universe. Is the universe expanding? Is it contracting? Is it static? Einstein believed, like most scientists, that the universe is static. Comes along Edwin Hubble in the 1920s. Hubble invents a telescope. They look out into the galaxies and they come to a clear conclusion that the universe is expanding. The whole scientific world comes to the realization that it's true. The universe is expanding. Einstein had a colleague who sent him a letter and said, listen, I was just at this conference. We have evidence the universe is expanding. What was Einstein's reaction? He writes in a letter back to his colleague, I find the idea of an expanding universe irritating. So I asked Brian, Brian, when Einstein says he's irritated that the universe is expanding, is that an intellectual reaction or is that an emotional reaction? It's clearly an emotional reaction. <laughs> I wasn't irritated when I found out the universe is expanding. I could care less. Why is he so irritated? And the answer is very simple. It meant that Einstein's theories were wrong. Nobody likes to be wrong. As a matter of fact, Einstein was so irritated, he refused to believe the results. He flew to California, he looked through the telescope himself, and he still refused to believe the results. He thought there was something wrong with the calculations. He didn't want to accept it. It took Einstein 15 years, and at the very end of his life, when every scientist in the world other than him had conceded that the universe is expanding, he finally gave up. In his last years of life, he came to the realization that he had been wrong. Einstein, in his final days, said that looking back and realizing that he rejected this reality for 15 years, he said it was the biggest mistake of his scientific career. I said, Brian, you have to ask yourself a question. You spent four years asking the question, does God exist? You didn't check out your emotional bias. You didn't ask yourself the question, how do I feel about the idea of God existing? Brian said, what are you talking about? It doesn't matter how I feel. Either it's true or it's false. I said, no. You have to look at your biases. 
Broin all of a sudden looks at his watch, says, Rabbi, it's five o'clock, thank you very much. He gets up, goes to the front of the study hall, collects his $20 from his friend, walks out. So the next day, I come to the yeshiva, nine o'clock in the morning, and there's Brian. I go over to him and say, Brian, what are you doing here again? Is this another $20 bet? He says, Rabbi, I tell you the truth. You asked me yesterday how I felt about the idea of God. That question kept me up the entire night. I was tossing and turning. How do I feel about God? And I realized, I really don't like the idea that there's some being up in the sky watching me with a scorecard who's watching my every move. I don't like the idea. And then I realized everything I had been studying for all those years in university, all the arguments for, all the arguments against, the existentialists, the medieval philosophers, the logical philosophers, I realized there's actually a lot of evidence that God exists. Rabbi, I realized I actually believe in God. I just don't like it. So Brian, overnight, without me giving him any evidence at all, goes from being an atheist to being a believer. And to this day, Brian is an observant Jew.